the kids I work with feel like they've got nothing. And I've really struggled with therapies that will fix that. The Nurtured Heart approach for me is a way of giving tools to not only myself, but parents, teachers, um, youth workers, anybody that's at that cold face with these kids to help them really see what's great about them and really start to look to life with a bit more hope um, and a bit more purpose. This work evolved out of my work as a family therapist working with some of the most difficult kids and it's moved into how to help kids build inner wealth and by doing that helping them to flourish. The approach has evolved from being used primarily with parents to now being used in larger scale ways in education and thousands of classrooms around the world in many different kinds of therapeutic applications in group homes in uh, foster care by child advocates. I've tried all kinds of different models for approaching kids and, and helping them to improve um, and I have not run across anything that feels more intuitive, more natural, more um, accessible for kids. I am the approach. I don't have to learn something again. I don't have to remember. I don't go into my head because I'm trying to think of what did it say on page 327? Because when you're coming from your heart, when you are the approach of Nurture Heart Approach, there's no mistakes. You talk to people, energize them about their greatness, and you see it growing, not at all giving energy to anything negative. The Nurtured Heart Approach is so powerful because it gets at the core of their uh, opinion of themselves. And no one has ever said, you're awesome. Because of their negative behaviors, challenging behaviors, really intense behaviors, they've elicited negative attention from all of the people that have worked with them without ever really noticing and bringing out and blooming uh, in their own minds uh, that there's a, a level of uh, uh, awesomeness to them that no one has ever taken the time uh, to, to share with them. If adults are there in their lives just to tell them what to do, yeah, tell them no, to judge them, to tell them where they're going around, to point out all the bad points, nothing will change. But the approach changes that. The approach looks as, I'm going to recognise your qualities. I've been through kind of a therapeutic life since I was around eight. Um, I was kind of the little monster child and hard to handle a lot. And I ended up getting myself into self-harm, which is a really scary experience. Then, you know, continuing with this strong attitude I had against everything, um, the only thing that everyone thought to do was just punish me. It took, you know, att attempted suicide for things to really get, I mean, it just threw us off the cliff. When we started doing the Nurtured Heart, it completely changed everything. I started noticing a difference like within the first week with my family, which meant a lot to me. So now being able to have so much trust into my family and you know, really knowing that I am not gonna be put down, you know, if I'm on the top of the stairs, I'm not gonna be thrown down if, if I make a mistake. There's always a reset. The, the biggest thing for me really was the amazing difference this approach made with my son, who I, my husband and I had given up hope on. I'm thinking, I'm not the mom for this kid. I don't know what to do. So the Nurtured Heart approach turned all of that around, gave, told me I am the right mom for this kid. Actually, it's even better than I ever thought it was going to be. I'm, I can be a better mom than I ever thought I could be because of this. Once we knew how to have beautiful, intentional relationships, and once our eyes were turned on what was right about them, instead of focusing on all the diagnoses, all the things that were wrong, all the things that the predictions would be like, oh, this is gloom and doom. Once we knew how to go, no, we're just gonna stay in this moment right here. And in this moment, we see greatness. In this moment, we see what's right. In this moment, you are magnificent. And we knew how to do that. It changed our hearts. And then we could parent them.
the tools that the approach provides just provide so much support for, okay, what do I do when she's upset? Or what do I do when I'm upset? It's, it's just, okay. Um, and your clarity and your boundaries to trust when I can handle it is, doesn't feel like abandonment, it feels empowering. And so it just kind of, I don't know, it's really good for adult child, like parent adult child relationships. Yeah, there's not oh an age gosh. limit on it. No. And I keep saying if the whole world can just get it, if the world can just get it, if the world can just get it, I can say that over and over, it would be such a much more beautiful world, a wonderful place to live if we remember to see the greatness in others. Turkey's my next. Um, Jeremiah, Desmond, you may come out of reset. Turkey's. Do you need some help? Jameer, can you help him out? Turkey's go, go, go. Turkey's gobble. Jeremiah, thank you for receiving that help from Jameer. And Jameer, thank you for helping your classmate out. That shows a good partnership going on right there. Good teamwork. Christina. A dog can run. A dog can run. Let's get another thing about a dog. Um, Jorday. Dog. Give me something about a dog. A dog barks a lot. A dog barks. And you know what, Jorday? I don't know if you paid attention, but right here we have that a turkey gobbles and a dog does what? Barks. So you just show me the difference between these two. You compare and contrast right there. Good job, Jorday. All right. Two school years ago, we had 45 students that were ineligible to return because their pattern of disruptive behavior did not improve over the course of the year. Last year, there were only five that really were problematic and were unable to return. So that's a big drop for us from 45 to actually five in, a, in that year's time. Um, with the population that I serve with special education students, those students who may be cognitively delayed, you're able to recognize anything about them. They're showing up for school, they're sitting in their seats, they're able to use a utensil to eat food. You know what I noticed, Steve, is that you're not hitting that window hard. And that shows really great self-control, because I, I, I know you're a little upset. I love how you're calming yourself. And I really love the way you're taking care of yourself right now, Steve. Do you know that? Do you know you're taking good care of yourself? Children need to know how special they are. They need to know how great they are. They need to know that they are a gift to the world. It doesn't matter where they come from. And if we can really convey that to them, I mean, if we can pour into them and help them internalize that fact, that's the antidote for poverty. It makes your individual life better, your relationships better. It makes you happier. It makes you um, uh, feel like you're contributing to the world and uh, it's synonymous with making the world a better place. So what I can absolutely guarantee is exquisite moments of recognizing who you are and the gift that you are and the joy of playing with the gift you are. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen.